Income tax 2023-2024. Health savings account HSA deduction. Get ready and some coffee because we're looking to get the tax man off our back with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information comes from the instructions for Schedule 1 section of the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2023 as well as Instructions for Form 8889 Health Savings Accounts HSAs 2023 which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line two, adjustments to income. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence a funny income statement. Income statements typically having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Deductions for taxes being goods, therefore we're always looking to increase them if we can. Noting the major differences in the categories of deductions, the adjustments to income or above the line deductions and the below the line deductions, standard or itemized deductions. One of those differences being that if you qualify for a above the line deduction, or adjustment to income, you don't have to clear a hurdle such as the standard deduction before you get a benefit from those items. First page of the form 1040, we're looking at line number 10, adjustments to income from schedule one. Here is the schedule one part two, which is the adjustments to income. We're focused on line 13, which is the health savings account deduction. And you can attach form 8889. You can look at the instructions from form 8889 for more detail as well. All right, line number 13. We have the health savings account. It's an HSA deduction. You may be able to take this deduction if contributions other than employer contributions, rollovers, and qualified HAS funds distributions from an IRA were made to your HSA for 2023. There's more detail, of course, that can be found in Form 8889. That's the summary or line instruction. Let's go into a bit more of that detail. A health savings account. What is it? It's a tax-advantaged medical savings account available to taxpayers in the United States who are enrolled in a high-deductible health plan that's an HDHP. Now, some of this terminology uh, is a little bit wonky and can get... First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Somewhat confusing. And it kind of goes back to when they were trying to adjust everything during the Obama administration. You can you might remember that they had this big argument with the Obamacare and the kind of some of the details of it from my perspective was that they were trying to simplify uh, the healthcare uh, process, and there's arguments in terms of how to better deal with that situation. And the situation is going to be obviously the cost of healthcare is quite high, and then the people that are able to get uh, healthcare, you want to make sure that everybody has the a capacity to get healthcare. One of the arguments for why healthcare was high is because you have this free rider problem, in that if people don't actually purchase healthcare then they still get they still do get health benefits because if they go to an emergency room or they have a problem they are, are going to typically be treated in which case that cost is basically taken on by the others that are paying for the premiums of the insurance which increases the insurance so part of what they wanted to do is is force everybody to have health insurance and if you don't buy health insurance then they were going to basically uh, penalize you and then they also part of the plan seemed to be that they wanted to centralize uh, the healthcare with less competition and whatnot, and rather try to make everything 
uh, more streamlined and uh, similar in nature. Now, some of that kind of went through and some of it uh, did not. And we ended up with some of this terminology uh, with regards to the types of health plans. And so now you've got this idea of a high deductible health plan. Now, high deductible, deductibles are typically the idea of what you have to pay when you actually get the benefit from when you pay for health care. So if I go and pay for, for health care of some kind, do I have to pay for it or uh, is there going to be, is it just going to be covered by the insurance? So that's tied in with the, the deductible. And the idea of a high deductible plan is usually with younger people that are healthy, the idea would be you might want more of a high deductible plan because you don't plan on going to regular doctor visits and whatnot. And because you're healthy and you don't have as much health problems. And then when you do get uh, go to the doctor, you, 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 you can pay the higher deductible, but you'll have lower premiums uh, is the general idea. So from that perspective, it's not like the best plan. It's not like the, the plan that you would get from the a rich person would probably have not have a high, everything would be covered.